Adley Doodley, Stephen Hartley here from Banbury UK. I uh, just wanted to um, talk about something about um, YouTube and the alternative media and chat about that. Um, now, what do people think? What are people thinking? Some people think a massive mini solar system is coming. Some people think God is coming. Some people perhaps think massive revolution is coming. And uh, perhaps some people who just think it's, it's the same o same -o. Now, for those people who are thinking it's just normal and it's just going to carry on, um, i got a question. <laughs> if you heard someone shouting at you, Oi! A massive rock is about to hit your head! You'd look round, wouldn't you? And look. Well... If you looked round and looked and there wasn't a massive rock about to hit you on the head, then you'd just think, oh, you bloody idiot, <laughs> and walk on. And then, you know, ten minutes later, somebody else, or the same person, <laughs> says, oh, a massive rock's about to hit your head. You might look again. And... If nothing was coming, you think oh, you get. Okay, so ten minutes later, and you hear someone again shout, a "Massive rocks gonna hit your head," and the voice sounded similar. You might not bother looking. Now, it may be that this time there is a rock smacks you on the head and if you'd have looked you could have moved out the way but um, you didn't because you'd heard it a couple of times before and decided to ignore it because you felt like you were being played for a fool and yes the whole Peter cried wolf thing you know how many chances do you give someone But there are a heck of a lot of people convinced something is coming. And so they're doing the decent thing, like this guy, maybe he didn't see a rock about to hit his head, but maybe he had a dream that someone was walking along the beach and a rock hit the head, or maybe he had a premonition, just knew it was going to happen, um, but forewarned too early perhaps now this scenario here um, is interesting I particularly believe that we have our subconscious and when we're in contact with our subconscious we just know things things just come to you you can't put they're not words they just come to you they're feelings visions and you just you just know and I believe the government know this because they've used um, psychics and stuff like that <clears throat> so then putting out December 2012 and I don't really know anyone really who thought that was the date um, you know, there's a guy on YouTube I follow called Is 2012 The Date? Because I think we all felt, you know, we know there's stuff going on. Um, and just by having that name, you know, it's going to get picked up 2012. You know, it's a question, isn't it? Is 2012 the date? He's not saying it is. He's asking that question. But, you know... We still know, and it hasn't gone away. The I thought, I believed in these remote viewers when they said June 1st, and I still think 
that what they saw was correct but much more scaled down than we thought and Cliff High he said in one of his broadcasts about the negativity of language when when something is negative people talk about it more so in a sense these remote viewings could seem a lot more negative than they actually were but all these remote viewers know at some point there's going to be total, you know something massive happening but they were given the date june the 1st so there's their insight was for that day june the 1st and you know what was coming out was fires and places underwater well we've had enough floods and funnily enough may 31st and june 1st or something sydney was just covered in fog quite rare for them but you know you got pictures of this fog coming towards them and then pictures inside the fog very very thick so in a sense you know you could argue that they weren't wrong but the june the first date or it's by the june the first could have been february could have been because we've known this sort of eight months in advance so the thing is the stuff is still going on and it's still accelerating um, things like volcanoes if you've heard previous videos that's fine <clears throat> now we've we've got so much going on YouTube you know we had the whole Alex Jones thing and the Bilderberg and it was you know there's stuff going on all the time the military military powers in and around Israel and Syria I mean there's all of them all their warships over there you know it hasn't gone away and what, what I wanted to talk about a bit like I said was YouTube and like the media they still have control over not con total control but more control than we'd like over YouTube because obviously when a lot of people who are making videos and things and talking about stuff well they have to have found their articles somewhere and some of them are going to places like RT BBC you know and using some of theirs but there also seem to be these other we like you've got newspapers and local newspapers and things like that so you know to an extent we are still only being able to pick up little snippets of um, what's really going on unless someone is actually living somewhere and reporting what's going on in their back garden which would probably be a bit boring <coughs> <coughs> And I've noticed uh, volcanoes don't get, um, you know, you hear about a volcano, it's a bit sketchy, you know, and occasionally you get the pictures, but you don't always get the pictures. So I, my personal belief is that much more is happening than we can even be aware of on YouTube in regards of weather phenomena and all the... Um, the websites that people use to detect you know to see if the earthquakes have been or volcanoes you know they'll notoriously miss ones um, you know or you'll hear it one place and then it's not on the other one you know that's common the all the machines that look at solar data and solar flares and magnet stuff you know they cut frames out so we can't get a whole picture and there's plenty of that so again all we can be really really sure of is that we're being deceived and if we're being deceived that means something is going to happen okay that is logic so even though it doesn't feel like it it is 
Okay, the next thing I wanted to mention was um, specifically about England. Now, it seems to me in England, even though jobs are shit and food's going up and everything's pretty tough and everyone's complaining, there's so much to complain about the government and everything else. It does not feel to me like the people are in the mood to protest. Now I've been wondering if protesting is any good or whatever. But this to me raises alarm bells because they're keeping us sweet. Now I can give you an example. Some, I watched um, the sort of life history of Che Guevara and um, he's a South, South American rebellion guy. They took over Cuba with Fidel Castro. And um, he wanted the whole of South America to rebel. And he was going to have a good chance of doing it in Bolivia. But by the time they got around to planning it and arranging it and going about to start it, the either their government or the US government gave a massive handout to everyone in Bolivia. So they were happy. They didn't want a revolution. No, no. We don't want a revolution. We've just been given loads. But why would we want a revolution? Ask them that question now, and they'd go for it. Because whatever it was they were given didn't last very long. But here's my point. England, it feels to me, and I can, can say with some personal experience, that, you know, we are being helped out through this recession. In this country, if, if, you, if as long as you're working, but you're not earning that much money, the government will top it up. You know, and I've been in a position where I nearly had to quit my business and go and get a job. And I thought, well, it, I might as well just get a mundane job and I can still think about my plans for whatever. Um, you know, nothing too demanding. It doesn't matter if it's low paid because the government will top it up. And if I still can't afford my rent, well, they will help pay some of my rent. And it seems that, you know, they do this without too much question. And it's my feeling that we are being kept sweet. It's also my feeling that the money just isn't really, um, how can we say, real? <laughs> how about that? We all know that money isn't real. So, so that makes me think, why? Well, I know that anyway. London is, you know, if, if the beast has a capital city, then I believe it's London. Or at least it's one of its, one of its capitals. It's its financial capital. How important is that? The, the beast, the ones in control, they did not like the Occupy movement. That was a real people thing. They didn't like it. And when we came to do it in London, as I've said before, they were on outside the um, financial sector. They were in that area for what, no more than a day, I don't think. And they were hoofed off pretty quick. They would not allow the financial wheels to stop moving. Now maybe by now they've got contingencies and they can carry on somewhere else. But at least at that time they wanted it moved. So I think they really scared of something like Brazil or Egypt happening in London or the Occupy movement. So in that sense, yeah, no, I think we should do it. If that's what they're scared of, 
that's what we should do. And right, lastly, journalists, you know, if someone grew up aspiring to be a journalist, to broadcast the truth, then, you know, boy, are we disappointed in you. What are you doing? You know, I thought journalists wanted to expose the truth. Where have you gone? You know, you, you're having to leave it up to amateurs to do it. You know, even like me, I'm one aspect of it. But what you should be doing, you know, yeah, you, we see the weather reports on the BBC weather pages. And I've watched a crappy Horizon programme about aspects of weather. But you really, really, really aren't doing a good job. You should be collating things, analysing things, trying to figure out what's going on. And you're not doing that. You're talking about someone with breast cancer or other, other personalities of politics. Oh, there's nothing so boring. You go on and on about it. I don't watch the news anymore. I'm sick of it. I turn it on for three sec. Oh, they're talking about that. You've really let us down. You really have. So I'm appealing to anyone who is a journalist or knows a journalist. Remember, you know, what you thought when you started that job, what you wanted to do. So that's it. Okay, thanks.